getting back a couple of weeks. We have Joe the plumber on the left, <laughs> and we have Microsoft on the right. And so if I can actually get a technique to quantify the change, what I would want to say is that if Joe the plumber becomes Microsoft, that is a change of one. However, Microsoft, Microsoft 2007, as opposed to Microsoft 2008, that will be a very small change. Maybe that should be a change of 0.01. But I need to somehow get the mathematics to work for me. And it took a while. If I looked at my auditing book, I was told that the auditor has to do analytical procedures. And uh, this is comparison of this year's results to prior years. And so I thought, well, let's have a look and see what it says on those pages. And I have about 13 ratios. But what I was looking for was some kind of a super ratio, a ratio that is a ratio of all ratios to tell me by how much I change from one year to the next. And we can take it a little bit further. We can actually then say that financial statements are materially misstated if the change number is something like 0.03. And if the change number is less than 0.03, they're not materially misstated. But I can really say that if I can really compare the reported numbers to the audited numbers. This was a very, very good document. And it talks about earnings restatements. And in this, the author from Kansas I won't read the sentence to you because I can't remember it, says something to the effect of, we don't really know how severe a restatement is. I can just tell you that some are worse than others, but we can't put a number to how, how severe the restatement is. Well, this was my set of data that I like to use. This is restaurant data. And what I'm doing, I'm comparing 2003 numbers 2006 numbers. And so actually this is two years of data ended in 2003 and two years of data ended in 2006. And we can see that the 24 months are very different. But can I quantify how different they are? And can I compare it to how different other restaurants are from each other? Well, my world opened up. Joy came to me. When I realized that you could actually write these financial numbers as vectors. And so what we have there is a vector on the left and a vector on the right. And quite amazingly, vectors in mathematical terms were only invented some 200 years ago. And if you ask a mathematician about something that was invented 200 years ago, they'll tell you that was yesterday. <coughs> so very, very recent, very, very new. And once I realized that you can write numbers as vectors, the world of vectors opened up to me. How important are vectors? This is a physics book in my collection. On page 14 of the 1400 page book, the author starts talking about vectors. In other words, vectors are to physicists as important as T accounts are to us. Page 14, page 15, we won't go through the whole book. Page 20, and in the other book, uh, physics book in my library, and the author introduced vectors on page 30. And at the end of the chapter, you can see there's a very neat summary, and there are algebraic rules to vectors. Vectors are very real to physicists. <coughs> Once we realize that vectors will work for us, the world of analytic geometry is there for the taking. Not only the world of analytic geometry, but the world of vectors. I bought this book in Kansas. Not only the world of vectors, but advanced vectors as well. So we have something in physics that we can now perhaps apply to accounting data. Well, let's have a look at a really small vector, and this is a really small set of financial statements. So, 2007, total assets and revenues, I have two numbers. Why are we keeping it small? Because with two numbers, I can plot it in two-dimensional space. So here we go, we're going to call that x and that y, and there we go. I'm now plotting those two points, x, y coordinates, and I have two points. And amazingly, I'll ask you if you can remember your uh, maths from high school, can we calculate the, the distance between those two points? Yes. Yes, mathematicians have figured out how to do that. 
So I can actually calculate that distance rather easily. But more than that, I can convert it to vectors. And once I convert it to vectors, the whole world opens up to me. Because there are some things happening here that I can now do with the accounting data. For example, there's an angle between the two vectors, always called theta. I can calculate the angle between the two vectors to somehow help me in quantifying how different these financial numbers are. I forgot my next slide. There we go. So I calculated the angle. I had 6,000 restaurants. I calculated the angles for each of them. And the smallest angle was an angle of 1.55 degrees. And you can see that those numbers track each other very closely. You will recognize, Alex, that the correlation is very high. So there is some relationship between this angle theta and the correlation. What we can see here is when the angle gets very big, these numbers are indeed very different. But there's more. You say no. I say yes. <laughs> there is more. Because I have something else going on. I, in fact, have what the physicists call as a displacement vector, which is vector C. <coughs> and this is exactly what we're after. How much do these differ by? We have this thing called the displacement vector. Maybe I can calculate it. And if I can calculate it, I will get the difference, but it won't be scaled from 0 to 1. But I'm on my way. So this is about April of this year. So there's my displacement vector. And hang on. I now have my formula. And my formula is going to look something like this. I'm going to take the length of C and divide it by the length of A plus the length of B. And when I do that, I have a measure based in physics and analytic geometry as to how much these two sets of financial statements differ from each other. 